All right. So we are going to go through some more additional practice. And in these problems here, you'll see the rigor increases um, with the more problems we do. Okay. So again, I encourage you to uh, complete the problem and then check your answer. Um, and if you don't understand it, then basically watch the video. All right. So let's get started. First one here. For this, you're going to use a combination of linear pairs, vertical angles, and the parallel lines. Okay. So angle one, if I look, angle one to find that, you know, these two angles are going to add up to 180. So 180, oops, 180 minus 42 is going to give you 138 degrees. Okay. Then angle two, right away you should know that these are vertical angles, so that's going to be 42 degrees. And then now that we found angle one is 138 degrees, now we know that angle three is going to be the same, 138. Angle four, if you look, this angle and this angle both touch the parallel lines and this transversal, right? Those are corresponding angles. Therefore, you know angle four right away is going to be 42 degrees. Now, angle 10 is probably the easiest because this box here tells us that that's 90 degrees. And that means angle 10 would also be 90 degrees. Angle five, right, is another easy one because if this is 90 degrees, Angle 8 has to be 90 degrees, and angle 5 has to be 90 degrees. Now, if angle 4 is 42 degrees, you know angle 7 is going to be 42 because those, this angle and this angle, are vertical angles. Then angle 6, right, if I look, these two angles have to add up to 90 so angle 6 would be 90 minus 42, which is going to give you um, 38 degrees. No, sorry. 48 degrees. Oops, that's angle 6. And now angle 9 and angle 6 are vertical angles, so that's going to be 48 degrees also. So you don't have to go in numerical order with those type of problems. Keep that in mind. All right. So now, for example two, right away if you notice, this angle and this angle are alternate interior. And we know those are congruent, so 2x equals 72. Divide by 2x is equal to 36. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug that that's 40 or 72 degrees. And now if these lines are parallel and I use this, transversal, I notice that these two angles are same side interior. So 4z plus 72 equals 180. Subtract 72, 4z equals 108. Divide by 4, 108 divided by 4 gives you 27. Now, right away, when I look at the 72 degree angle, in this angle, if I use the yellow parallel lines and I use this transversal, those are alternate exterior angles, meaning they are congruent. So 5y plus 2 equals 72. 5y equals 70. y is equal to 70 divided by 5 gives you 14. Example 3. All right, so you have a lot of things going on here. But if I put arcs and angles, this arc and this arc, they both touch the yellow parallel lines, and they also touch this transversal, which means they're alternate interior angles. So W would be 25. Now, if I look at this and I see this parallel line, this parallel line with this transversal, right? X and 76 are alternate interior. 
So x is going to be 76 degrees also. Now, how do we find y? Well, you know these two angles are congruent. But it's easier if we go and find v first. Okay, if I look at v, if I put an arc in there, touches this parallel line, the red transversal. 42 touches the same blue parallel line and the same transversal. Those are alternate interior angles, so v is going to be 42 degrees also. Now to find y then, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and erase all of this. And I'm just going to plug the measures for each in just so you guys see it. So V is 42, right? You see X is 76, and you see W is 25. Now, here's the easiest way to find Y. If I use this set of parallel lines, and then I go ahead and I use this as my transversal, then I know this entire angle and this entire angle have to add up to 180 because they're same side interior angles. So this entire angle would be 42 plus 25, which is 67 degrees, right? So Y plus 76 plus 67 adds up to 180. So Y plus, if I look at that, 76 plus 67 gives you 143 equals 180. 180 minus 143 tells you Y is 37 degrees. Okay. Example four. Okay, when I look at this, these lines get a little confusing, right? But when you look, they tell you this line is parallel to this line, but they also tell you that this line is parallel to this line. If I just start plugging like values in, right, um, using this 120 degree angle, right away I know if this is 120 degrees and these yellow lines are parallel, these are these two angles are same side interior, so 180 minus 120 would give me this angle 60. Well, x and 60 are vertical angles, so they're congruent, and x is 60. If I look at the 120 degree angle now, and the y, if the blue lines are parallel, and this yellow line is a transversal, these are corresponding angles, so y is 120 degrees. Example five, right? These are good ACT problems, okay? So whenever I see a problem like this, there's no direct correlation between 35 and X. But what they want you to do is draw a third line parallel to L and M. So now all three of these lines are parallel. Well, think about this. If this angle is 35 degrees, I know this angle is going to be 35 degrees because they're alternate interior angles. This box tells me that's 90 degrees. So 90 minus 35 would give me 55 degrees. And this angle here and X are congruent because they're alternate interior angles. So that's 55 degrees. Example six, same thing. No direct correlation between any of these angles. And they're looking for the measure of angle A, B, C, which is this angle here. So right away, I'm going to draw my third line parallel to the other two. And then I'm going to use a similar pattern. This is 38 degrees, and these lines are parallel. This is going to be 38 degrees because they're alternate interior angles. If these angles are alternate interior, that's going to be 33 degrees. And now what do I do to find the measure of that whole thing? 38 plus 33 would give you 71 degrees. Example 7. Okay, 
Now, there's no direct correlation between this and X, or, or any of this and X. So what I have to do now, draw a parallel line here, and a parallel line here. So now, if this is 50, I know this is 50, these two angles, this angle and this angle, add up to 80, so that's 30. Now, this angle's 30, right? Because they're alternate interior angles. If that's 120, 120 minus, oops, 180 minus 120, because these are same side interior angles, this is going to be 60, so now I notice that X is going to be 90 degrees. So we use alternate interior, subtracted 50, 80 and 50 to get 30. Alternate interior, same side interior, right? And now add 60 and 30 to get 90. Here. I know that these two angles are congruent because they're alternate interior angles. So 3x equals 42. That means x is 14. Y, though, on the other hand, how, how would I find y? Well, if this is going to be 42 degrees, this whole angle is going to be 110 degrees. Because 68 plus 42 is going to be 110. So... 5y, this angle, and 110, these have to add up to 180. 180 minus 110 is 70. So 5y is 70. So divide by 5, y is 14. Example 7. In order to find 1 and 2, I have to find one of these angles, which means I have to find x. What do these two angles do? 3x plus 2x adds up to 180 because they are a linear pair. 5x equals 180. 180 divided by 5 will give you 36. So now, 2 times 36, that's 72 degrees. And if that's 72 degrees, I know 180 minus 72 is going to give you 108. So angle 1 is 108, but then now this angle and this angle are alternate interior, so angle 2 has to be 72 degrees. So these type of problems in example 8, right, these type of problems tend to get a little tough or difficult because, you know, you have full triangles and it's hard to, to read different, you know, uh, angles. So when I look, this line and this line are parallel. And that means that these here are corresponding angles if we use this transversal. What do we know about corresponding angles? They are congruent. 4x minus 5 equals 3x plus 11. If I solve 4x, I get x is equal to 16. I need to find x in order to find y because now I have to plug that back in. 4 times 16 minus 5 will give me 59 degrees. And now what do these two angles have to do? 3y plus 1 plus 59 has that up to 180. 3y plus 60 equals 180. 3y equals 120, y is equal to 40. So x is 16, y is 40. All right, example 9. Notice here, if this line is parallel to this line, and this line is parallel to this line, I think the easiest angle to find right away is y, because if I use this transversal, those are same side interior. So 180 minus 104 would give me y is 76 degrees. However, for x, you have to know if I use this transversal, if I use this transversal with the yellow lines, you have to understand that 
x and 27 together and 76, those are corresponding angles. So x plus 27 pl uh, equals 76. And when you do 76 minus 27, you get 49 degrees. Number 10, right away, if I use these two parallel lines and this transversal, what I notice is this angle and this angle are corresponding. So 8x minus 5 equals 75. 8x equals 80, x is equal to 10. Now to find y, right, what I have to know is if this is 75, using these blue parallel lines, using those blue parallel lines, what happens is <clears throat> uh, if this is 9y minus 3, I know this is 9y minus 3 because these are corresponding angles. Now, these are same side interior angles. So, 9y minus 3 plus 75 equals 180. 9y plus 72 equals 180. 9y equals 108. y is equal to 12. Number 11. So right away, if I look at this, there's no direct correlation between 2x and 4x plus 30. But what I do know is that this angle and this angle are vertical angles, so 4x plus 30 would be the measure of this. Now, these are same side interior angles. So I know 4x plus 30 plus 2x has to add up to 180. So 6x plus 30 equals 180, 6x equals 150, when I divide by 6, x is equal to 25. But now they want us to find the measure of this angle here. Well, if I plug the value of x back in, 2 times 25 tells me that this angle is 50 degrees. Well, if this line is parallel to this line, these angles are corresponding. Therefore, if this is 50 degrees, angle SCD is equal to 50 degrees. And the last one here. ST is parallel to XW. Now, ST bisects VSW. So right away, if VSW, that's this angle here, if that's bisected, I know this angle is congruent to that angle. So they want us to find the measure of angle X and the measure of angle W. So the first thing I want to do is kind of look and, and find these angles here. All three of these angles have to add up to 180. So if I take 180, subtract 40, I would get 140. So these two angles are congruent and have to add up to 140. So if I take 140 divided by two, this angle is 70, that angle is 70. And right away I have to notice that this angle here and this angle here, if I use these parallel lines in this transversal, those are alternate interior angles. Therefore, this would be 70 degrees. So angle W is 70. Now think about this. If I use the blue parallel lines again, but now I'm gonna switch and use this transversal. This angle is, this whole angle here, is going to be 70 plus 40, which is 110. Well, that angle and this angle are going to be supplementary, which means 180 minus 110, that's going to be 70 degrees also. Go ahead, try the homework, and let us know if you have any questions.